Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use an image as the background of any button on your Squarespace website. Now, this tutorial is for any version of Squarespace, an older site like Brine or Bedford or one of the latest templates on 7.1. Doesn't matter which version you're using, this code is going to be exactly the same. One important thing I want to mention, however, is that the codes I'm about to show you are for small, medium, and large on-page buttons. There are different code names for different types of buttons in Squarespace. The button for a header in 7.1 is different than the button for a header in Brine, and it's different than a form submit button or an add to cart button. All of those go by different element names, and what I'm focusing on in this tutorial is changing just the small, medium, and large button. So if you want to change something a little more unique, like a form submit button or a light box button, definitely check out the code names listed in my CSS cheat sheet inside the square.co forward slash CSS. I have a bunch of button names listed out there for you, but what we're focusing on today are just those on page buttons. Okay. So the other thing I'd like to mention is that we're going to be using a PNG image that stands for portable networks graphic, which isn't really important to the tutorial, but I think it's a fun thing to know for any trivia night. Anyway, we're using a PNG that has a transparent background because I'm also going to show you how to add some cool hover effects to this particular image so it stands out a little bit more when someone hovers over it with their cursor. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into the tutorial, but the codes I'm reviewing today are listed in the description below. So when you're ready to apply this to your own website, just follow the three steps or four steps that I've outlined below and copy and paste that code into your own site. Okay, let's go ahead and hop into my demo site and get started. So here I am in my demo site. Now I'm using version 7.1, but again, this will work in version seven as well. And you'll see I have a small, a medium and a large button on my page. I'm going to navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS. And this is where we're going to be pasting the code. But before we even get there, we have one very important thing to do. We need to upload the image that we want to use. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and open my custom files. I'm clicking the button that says manage custom files. Now you can either click this arrow right here to open up the file explorer on your computer or do like I do, just drag and drop that file right where you want it to be. It's really important that we host our own image so that this URL stays specific to this image. If you use a PNG hosted on a different website, the owner of that website could change the URL without letting you know, which could make your website look kind of funky. So make sure you upload the image to your own custom file section. Okay. That's what we just did. We dragged and dropped. We're ready to rock. So the first part of this code is to name what you want to change, which is the small button. That's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to say SQS block button element dash dash small. Okay. Then we're going to open up a bracket. And the next thing we're going to do is make sure that that background color isn't there anymore. Cause we want to use the image instead. So I'm going to say background color transparent, and then I'm going to add exclamation point important. I'm adding exclamation point important because I want to make sure that the browser prioritizes my code over any code it might see. Sometimes buttons are a little tricky, so I always add that as just a little safeguard to make sure that my code is going to show up. So that I'm adding a semicolon here, and this is where we're going to actually add the image. We're going to say background image URL parentheses, and then open up a quotation mark. And then there's a single quotation mark, by the way, I'm going to click manage custom files and just click on the file name itself and check it out. We're already getting that image there, but it looks terrible. It's only taking up part of the button because it's way bigger than the actual button space itself. So we have more code to add. After that final parentheses, I'm going to add a semicolon and then I'm going to say background position center, except I'm going to spell center correctly. There we go. So now it scooted over and it's center, but this gold PNG image that I'm using is kind of a cool flourish. All I'm getting is the solid actual gold background there. The image is way zoomed out. So I'm going to zoom it back in. So it's actually contained within that space of the button. So I need another semicolon and I'm going to say background size contain. There we go. And now you'll see that's the actual image I was going for but you'll notice we're not quite done yet. You can see it's repeating itself. There's a little bit at the top and it's a little cut off at the bottom. That's not what I'm aiming for. So I need another semicolon and I'm going to say background repeat, no repeat. There we go. Now it's gone away and we get just the one instance of that image centered in the small button itself. 
So the next part of this code is actually just a personal preference of mine. You'll notice in Squarespace sites, when you hover over buttons, they actually change the opacity a little bit. They make it a little bit lighter. Because I'm using an image, I wanna make sure that that image stays a strong color, is 100% visible. I don't want it to be slightly transparent. So I'm actually gonna change that hover effect with a little bit of code. So I'm gonna enter a new line and I'm gonna say SQS block button element dash dash small. And then I'm gonna add the word hover. This means whatever code I'm about to type only applies on a hover effect. So we're gonna open up a bracket and say opacity one exclamation point important. Now you'll notice the other buttons still get lighter, but the small button stays that strong color. I also wanna make sure the user understands they're about to click on a button. Now the cursor itself changes a little bit automatically, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drop shadow so it stands out a little bit more. I'm gonna add a semicolon and I'm gonna say filter drop shadow and then open up a parentheses and we'll just go with 3px, 3px, 5px and then uh, just a solid gray. There we go. So now when I hover over that image, I get a little bit of a shadow. It's going to stand out quite a bit more. And again, because we isolated just the small button, nothing's happening to medium or large. So let's say you do want to change this and have this apply to the large button. I'm just going to remove that word small and replace it with the word large. Let's do that for the hover effect as well. And you'll see already now the large button has that gold in the background and the small button has gone back to where it was before. So that's how you change it between small, medium, and large. You just change that word right there. Let's go ahead and run through this code one more time before you try this on your own site, okay? So the first thing we've done is name the element that we wanna change. In this case, it's the large button. The next thing we've done is set the background color to transparent because I don't want the color, I want the image. That's the next part of the code. Background image, URL, parentheses, single quotation mark, and that's where we've added the actual URL for the image, which is hosted in your custom files section. After that, we said background position, center. We want that image centered in the button. And then we've said background size contain. We want the image shrunk down so it's contained to the size of the button. And then finally, we said background repeat, no repeat. We don't want multiples of this image horizontally or vertically. We just want the one image contained in the background of the button, okay? And then the other line that we added, again, more of a personal preference, totally up to you. I set the opacity to be 100% visible on a hover, so it's not gonna fade on a hover. And I also gave it a little bit of a drop shadow so it still stands out when someone hovers over it with their cursor. Now that we're all done, I'm gonna select save and we'll be good to go. And that's it for this tutorial. The codes that I use today are listed in the description beneath the video, along with a much more simple step-by-step -step for you so you can follow along when you're applying this to your own website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.